Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for holding this really important hearing. Uh, it comes at an important time. Obviously, we're in a pretty unprecedented moment right now, and it does give us an opportunity and I think the necessity to think through uh, the basic elements of our economy and what the future is going to look like. We have the time and I think the real necessity to think that through. In Michigan, uh, you know, we are the center of the automotive industry. I, I'm from Flint, which is the birthplace of General Motors. I might have mentioned that I'm from Flint a time or two. Uh, but the auto industry uh, is in a in a, a transitional phase, and in fact, there's a, a movement toward electrification. Uh, the the market is heading in that direction, uh, and we'll benefit from that. We'll benefit in terms of the environmental impact of autos, but we'll also benefit in terms of safety and uh, ultimately in terms of savings for consumers. Right now, China is the number one manufacturer of electric vehicles in the world. So we have to do more, I believe, to get in front of, uh, of our competition. I'm a hockey player. I like to go where the puck is going, not chasing it all the time. And I think the market's taking us there. And we need to think about the incentives that we need to put in place in order to, uh, in, in order to win the future when it comes to vehicles, particularly around electric vehicles. My act, uh, the Driving America Forward Act, would expand the electric vehicle tax credit. That's one way to incentivize investment in electric vehicles. And I think it's an important way on the demand side to create some incentives, but it's not all we have to do. The movement toward this technology re will require significant new research and development. And I'm particularly concerned that some of the auto uh, manufacturers, the OEMs, are burning a lot of their cash that normally would be devoted to R&D right now just to maintain operations. They're burning their reserves. That's a a problem, but I'm, I'm wondering, um, perhaps, um, Dr. Wynn Smith, if or Ms. Uh, Wynn Smith, if you might comment on how we can continue to make the investments, given the fact, as you referenced, that China is significantly ramping up, catching us, and will pass us in terms of their investment in R and D. Um, how can we uh, continue to lean in, be competitive, invest? given the fact that um, we respect openness, uh, we respect and embrace collaboration and the synergy that comes from that, uh, given the fact that China engages in all these practices that we know are, are, um, are, are destructive and actually um, you know, counter competitive. Is there, you know, the, their acquisition of trade secrets, all the things that they do. We live in a world of openness. We live in a world where we like to see that synergy. Can you talk a little bit about how we can continue to advance ourselves in terms of the R&D we do in this space, given the fact that culturally we have a different approach? One thing I think we need to consider in this um, new game plan for the future is to look at some of the legislation that was very timely when it was passed, but it needs updating. So one, of course, is the uh, research and development tax uh, credits, but also the Cooperative Research and Development Act, which gave some limited relief from uh, collaboration with fear of trouble damages and antitrust. And we really need to have more uh, clarity on how, for instance, the U.S. automakers could come together without fear of antitrust uh, actions coming to them to work on collaboratively and pull their resources around the next generation advanced battery technology, because that's really a holy yeah. grail for all of this. And so that's one thing that I, I would highly recommend, but also, you know, looking at the, the tax credit on the research and development. But instead of everybody competing on the battery side, and there is the advanced battery consortium that Argonne Lab and the universities participate in some of the companies, but I think that needs to be accelerated in a big way. The second thing is really the state um, regulations and certainly the Energy Regulatory Commission state by state that set a patchwork of regulations and the extent to which there could be some national imperative to look at the electrification as a national uh, goal and need. Back to, to Dr. Xi's comments about demand. Because right now we have a patchwork of state by state regulation that acts as a barrier. One thing that's an example from COVID 
is that we were able to bust through a lot of the regulatory impediments that have inhibited telemedicine. You know, state by state was regulating it and there was preemption because of the need to have telemedicine. So I think there's a lot that could be done on the tax, fiscal, regulatory environment, but to enable the pooling together of assets um, among these companies. And another area would be in the critical materials too that they need. Thank you. My time's expired. I really appreciate the testimony of the witnesses. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.